United stand is back. We're in Vegas. We've made it to the last leg of the US trip. We're outside the Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. It is hot. It is too hot. I'm going to be running inside in a minute once this is finished. It is absolutely baking hot. And this is your look ahead to Manchester United playing in the stadium behind me, fully air-conned, not having to deal with this heat. Football fanatics, get ready. The United Stand pre-season tour is here, powered by One Football, the ultimate app for live scores, transfers, and match stats. Download now. No one gets you closer. Yes, here we are, the last part of the tour. Well, the US part of the tour anyway. We've got the two games when we get back, but this is the last main game, really, this tour. It has been it has been a productive tour. It has been good for Manchester United. We had a great performance against Arsenal in the first game at the MetLife Stadium, another fantastic stadium like the one behind us. Then we had the under-21s. That was a bit of a hit and miss. We did see some promise in that game, though, so we'll take the positives from that. Then we obviously had a bit of a lesson from Real Madrid. We didn't really perform on on the night, uh, missed our chances, bad news about Kobe Maynou, and that game sort of just showed exactly where we was. This game tonight against Dortmund, I would say, is a game <clears throat> I fully expect Manchester United to win. The opposition isn't as good as Real Madrid and Arsenal, in my opinion. This is probably our weakest opponent of this US tour. Obviously, the under-21s and Wrexham is a different game altogether, so I'm taking it into context there in terms of the first teams that we've played. Dortmund are probably the weakest outfit, and I fully expect Manchester United now. What are we? Five or six games into full pre-season now with the games we've had in Edinburgh and in, uh, in Oslo. I think United must be favourites for this game. Yeah, Dortmund are in form going into this game, but they've been playing a load of dross. No disrespect to the teams that they've played, but they're not on Dortmund's level. They're playing teams here that are low down in the MLS, teams in America. They have been out here on tour for a while as well now. So looking at that, I look at this and go, the opposition we've played, two tough teams in Arsenal and Real Madrid. I think United will be prepped for this game. I think it's going to be a really exciting game tonight inside the stadium here. I do think United are just going to go at this game now. I feel like Ten Hag is at a point in this pre-season tour. And we did the training yesterday. We stayed behind in San Diego so we could bring the training, try and get some extra footage for you guys. So this is why we are just doing this now outside the stadium. We are not had a look inside it. We're going to save that for later when we come in for the game, obviously. But... I'm looking at it now, and from that training session yesterday in San Diego, Ten Hag looks like he's primed. He looks like he's ready to go. He wants results now. He wants to get performances on the pitch. You can see his frustration after the Real Madrid game. I remember talking to uh, <laughs> I remember talking to Brandon Williams after the game, and he said. It wasn't too disappointed. He didn't go in too hard on them. We'll look back at the video. He fully would have looked back at that video, then taken that into training, and then taken this into this game here tonight. This game, Ten Hag will want to be finishing with a bang. He'll want to be finishing well against Dortmund here. This is why I fully expect a Manchester United victory. And that's not being bullish and overly confident. I'm not disrespecting Borussia Dortmund now at whatsoever because they are a very, very decent side. And obviously they should have won Bundesliga last year, apart from that meltdown on the last day when they gifted it to Bayern Munich. But I do think United, what's happened here on tour, the form we picked up in the Arsenal game, the performances we've had, the positives we've had, I do think that we have got the stronger team. We've got Martial possibly coming back tonight. That's something to look for. Another game for Andre Anana. Interesting to see how he now sets it up. I fully expect tonight to see a Mason Mount Casemiro and Bruno free. I think we'll see Anthony on the right. I think we'll see Rashford probably in the middle and then Garnacho on the left. That's how I'm expecting it. Obviously, that will change very, very soon because I was asking you guys in training yesterday about your favourite front three to start the season. That now has an option of Erasmus Hoyland, who was confirmed. Here we go. Yesterday, it was all covered here on the United stand. He has now signed for Manchester United. That will officially be done and dusted next week when the team returns from this US tour. So looking ahead, we've got that to come. But I think for tonight, we might see Rashford in that middle. middle. Unless Martial comes in, that's really... I would love to see Martial get half a game just to put him in at number nine. Either with Garnacho aside of him, Anthony aside of him, or Rashford aside of him, even Palestra. I just want to see Martial in the middle again playing. This is the biggest season, and we say this about Martial all the time, because now we've got an out-and-out -out replacement for him. And even when he's fit, that doesn't mean he's guaranteed to start games. And the reason I'm saying this, and you're going to say, oh, it's all ground, Anthony Martial never let... He always lets us down, but Ten Hag... When I asked him the question in the press conference the other day, and this is where I'm going with this with Martial, it's like Ten Hag has challenged Martial. 
they tell us if they're fit. They, they have to make themselves fit, is Ten Hag's words. So the challenge has been laid now. Martial could have strolled in and out that team whenever he wanted last season because we didn't have a striker. Ronaldo ditched us and Martial was our only out and out striker all season. Vegas wasn't good enough. So Martial just, I, I honestly think that this now with that message from Ten Hag and United spending the amount of money that we are spending on Rasmus Hoyland, I think this is now time for Martial to go, I better put up and I definitely need to shut up. I mean, he's not said much anyway. I'm just using the phrase and the saying there, but Martial doesn't ever speak, really. But he talks with his feet and he hasn't been available for Ten Hag. I think that's the challenge and that's what was set from Ten Hag. He's gone to Martial and said, make yourself fit. Show me you want to be available for Manchester United. Show me that you want to play for this team no matter what. Because he's one of them players, I think, any sort of little snag, a little niggle or injury, he's calling it off. That's how it's coming across. That's the message I'm getting from the manager. I'm not necessarily going right in on Martial here. I'm saying that's what I'm picking up from the manager. They have to make themselves available and want to be available. That might mean he isn't 100%, but can you give us an hour? That's what I think that message is from Ten Hag. That's how I'm reading it. And for me, I think this is a big, big tour for Martial. If he can get in this game tonight, I don't know how far along he is. Obviously, he's been back in training for three or four days now. Will he get 20 minutes at the end? I'll take that. I just want to see him playing again. I want to see him playing in this first team with these players around him, the better players around him. I want to see what he's got. And I want to see what his, what his attitude is towards this season ahead. He's now got someone who's definitely going to possibly start ahead of him coming in in Highland. So... I look at that and go, it's on you now. The onus is on you, Tony. I would definitely start Guy Nacho. I thought he was a massive positive against Real Madrid. And I thought Anthony, when he came off the bench, was a game changer. He just went at that Madrid defence. And I thought he was probably one of our better attacking players in the second half. I would go exactly that three. Rashford, Guy Nacho, and Anthony. That would be my front three. The, front, the midfield three would be, like I said, Casemiro, Bruno and Mason Mount. I can't wait to see that combination. And the back line speaks for itself. Unfortunately for Dallo, when Bazaka keeps his place in the team, he's just pipping him right now. And that's another player that's challenged Dallo. Now, with Wambazaka coming back to the form he was last season, I think he starts. So now we've got real competition for places in there. Lindelof will come in and slot in if any of Martinez or Rafael Varane don't fancy it, get an injury or aren't performing well. And obviously on the left-hand side, Luke Shaw, with Malassia not here, you've got Brandon Williams there, who hasn't played bad this tour. To be honest, to give him his due, he hasn't been bad. So I look at that and I go, Brandon Williams is still. Players are actually stepping up on this tour. When Hannibal played in the under-21s, I thought he was excellent. I thought he was man of the match the other day. And Ten Hag looking for these players to stand out and actually come to the fore and give him an headache. There's a few of them, I think. Because obviously we had the injury with Hamad. Uh, and I'm thinking, right, OK, we have to hold off a little bit on Palestri now in terms of him going out on loan, because that is the rumour that he will be doing. I'd actually keep Palestri. I would. I think he belongs in this matchday squad. I think he gives us a very good option because he's very direct, he's very nimble, low centre of gravity, very Messi-esque. I just think he's got that little bit of something that none of the other players in our front line have got. I'm keeping Palestri as well. Does that mean that Ahmed has to go back out on loan? If, if needs be, it has to happen. It has to happen, and I want to see Ahmad get his chance as well, but you get the injury, it's unlucky, that's football, it's horrible, it's a horrible way to be, but it has to happen that way. Or do you want to keep all of them? Do you want to be keeping every single player on their toes? Because honestly, right now, the one player in that front line that's at threat, uh, Jaden Sancho and Martial, we've talked about them a lot, like I just did with Martial, I've talked about Sancho in my last video as well. Palestri and Ahmad, these sorts of players, I think, are chomping at the bit, and a few more games of Sancho underperforming or not quite cutting it and Palestri takes that chance like Garnacho did I can see Sancho sitting it out I know we're putting a lot of time and effort into Sancho but I do believe that Palestri is ready to play I hope we see him tonight I hope we see Martial tonight I hope we see that midfield three that I said I'm looking forward to seeing Anana again in his second game and this all starting to come together it's two weeks till the start of the season and we've still got three more games to play in pre-season yet that's how jam-packed this summer tour is. But it is getting better and we are getting to that point now where I think Ten Hag has almost got it set. I think the back four is taking care of itself. I think the midfield three, done and dusted. The question marks are in that front three and that's what I'm looking for tonight and that's what I'm looking forward to seeing how he balances that out because there's plenty of players fighting for all three of them positions now going into the season. So, big night tonight. Last chance on a big stage for these players, I think, to actually show Ten Hag that they are worth a pick come the start of the season.
So all this sports and maybes, I think we're all waiting in anticipation right now. I need to get out of this heat. I need to get into that stadium later on and actually cool off a little bit. It's been a long flight, a long day so far. I'm looking forward to seeing some action here at the end of the day. Guys, tune in later on for my uh, post-match roundup, and obviously we'll try and bring you some action from the mix zone as well. Mark, he's there doing his watch-along as always. Get up, people, put that alarm on. Join Mark later for the watch-along, and let's all stick this together all the way through the night. We all suffer together watching United on these tours, don't we? Guys, like, share and subscribe to the United Stand. Cheers for watching, everyone. I'll see you at the game later.